Welcome, Left Reckoners. I'm Matt Leck. With me is David Griscom. Hello, David. Hey, brother. Uh, joining us today, I'm very excited to be joined by the hosts of one of my new favorite podcasts, Minion Death Cult. I think uh, some of our listeners will be familiar with uh, Alexander Edward and Tony Boswell of the programs. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having us. Yeah, pumped to be here for sure. Thank you. Um, so for folks who don't know, uh, you guys keep an eye on sort of what is become the uh, public sphere of uh, modern uh, age, which is the comment section, the reply section where conservatives and other people get to express themselves. But just introduce Minion Death Cult for people who aren't familiar with it. Yeah, so we take sort of like the classical uh, philosophical approach of the agora, the discussion that hap the riveting and intellectually stimulating conversations that happen in, in the agora. Uh, today's agora, of course, is, yeah, Facebook comment sections, uh, Fox News comment sections, Newsmax comment sections, just to see how the modern day real American is processing the politics and culture around them. And uh, of course, it, it is every bit as deranged as you would expect. Yeah. Uh, and so I mean, on that front, um, on Wednesday uh, this week uh, coming up on, I believe, the 23rd, that would be, we have the first presidential debate on the GOP side, the primaries. And I'm curious, so David and I have been keeping an eye on the uh, DeSantis versus Trump uh, split and how conservatives are going to be navigating that. I mean, our take has been sort of from the top that DeSantis has zero chance <laughs> and he's going to get yeah. wiped out immediately. But um, the funny thing about that is how the right has to like they, they there's a very clear desire I think among professional uh, Republicans and Republican people like Ben Shapiro here to move on from uh, you know Mr. President Trump um, he has this poll here of Daily Wire viewers uh, which do you care about more if you are a Republican voter if the two are in conflict and. I, of course, voted for Trump's legal battles, um, but I lost 15% uh, to 85%. Daily Wire Ben Shapiro followers say beating Biden in 2024. I do think that there's a woman, I don't know if she'll come up. Oh, yes, here's, I think she has the right answer, both. I don't, th I think that's pretty much the only answer that you should accept if you're a conservative. But <laughs> yeah. what are you guys seeing on this, uh, on this sort of phenomenon of like trying to move on from Trump, but Trump's still daddy? This question is so happen. funny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's trying so hard. He's it's <laughs> God bless him. It's it's such an attempt to to try and get people to see reason that uh, Trump is, I mean, publicly, you know, for the broader populace, uh, pretty distasteful, even more distasteful after after everything. Um, yeah, but they, they, they won't see it. They, they love Trump. Trump is their guy. Like everyone who's not Trump is a demon for even challenging Trump. Yeah, absolutely. This question is super funny, too, because it's like they didn't learn any lessons from from Democrats because the Democrat agenda was not get somebody they want in there. It was beat Trump. And look what happened. You know, like that, like <laughs> you can't yeah. you can't think that way. And yes. so, uh, it, it would be I mean, it would obviously be if, if the conservative inverse is about to happen, it's going to be awful. But yeah, the, no one's no one's beating Trump. The dude, the dude still got too much, um, too much swag. Do you come across like DeSantis guys? Uh, never. Ne Honestly, <laughs> like, it's so rare. The Where you see DeSantis supporters is like blue checks like Ben Shapiro yeah. on Twitter. And even, even they're too cowardly to usually give a full-throated endorsement of DeSantis. And then, of course, you have like weird Zoomer or millennial freaks who try to pretend that DeSantis is based because he's going to do the Holocaust to Disney employees. Um <laughs> And that that doesn't play well either. So you you really don't see it. You see people when DeSantis comes up, people just begin screeching about him being a rhino or a sellout or whatever. There's there's like no amount of culture war that he can dig into to a further degree than Trump does even. And and he still can't please the Republican base, which is yeah solidly in favor of Trump. Like he's their guy, and. I think there are a lot of people who are who are over Trump. There are a lot of conservatives who are sick of Trump. They just are smart enough to not say it, basically. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I mean, I'm yourself. curious what you all think about this because the thing about Trump is like 100% Trump got like lightning in a bottle with his base, right? Like they love that dude. I mean, look, and he's funny. He's <laughs> we love watching Trump talks and things like that because it's interesting to listen to. But um, you know, the thing is too is that like so DeSantis is trying to like out anti woke Trump, right? Mm -hmm. um, but he's like falling on on his face despite the fact that within like the Republican Party, within the base, and I'm sure within like the commoners and stuff that you're seeing, like the culture war stuff is so motivating for people. I mean, they got people to stop drinking Bud Light, which is like right. truly like one of the most incredible accomplishments ever, right? Yeah. Um, you know, so I'm just curious if, if y'all have any sense or hypothesis as to why, uh, you know, they like why Trump is still the guy um, compared to DeSantis on like this woke stuff, uh, the anti woke stuff is, you know, too. Uh, yeah. I don't know if Tony has an opinion. I guess my, my opinion on this would be that DeSantis is actually trying to do policy with the mm -hmm. woke stuff. And that's like, not that interesting. Yeah. He just, he doesn't have the charisma and the like stand up comedy chops, the showman chops that, is actually important to these people. You know, TV mm -hmm. is what's important to these people. They couldn't yeah. give a shit about legis legislation uh, banning books in Florida or whatever. That's far less interesting for them. Yeah, the, the, you know, the right's gone from, like, blaming everything on, on uh, identity politics and things like that, but they really do only care about the culture war because no one has been putting in more conservative you know exactly anti-woke policy than desantis but the guy looks like shit in cowboy boots so like they, <laughs> they 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 won't be able to get past that there's just no there's just no way and it it, it does speak volumes about what these people actually care about and it, it's uh it's funny it's it's pretty sad you almost, you almost feel bad for dude he's like turned into an absolute demon um all all for nothing He's just unlikable, like, and that's that's a real thing. Um, that's not something that you can easily dismiss as, oh, they don't care about policy or they only care about flash or whatever. It's a real thing. And like people are making this evaluation, not only do like, well, maybe I like how mean he is to gay people. Maybe I do like yeah, how yeah. much he, he hates LGBTQ people. Uh, but I don't see him winning a general election. I don't see him beating Trump, first of all, because Trump's far more powerful than this guy. And then once he gets into a general election, he's totally unlikable. He's more unlikable yeah. than the guy whose brain is half half custard, you know. <laughs> uh, so uh, I think people are I, both making like a visceral reaction, a visceral decision to his unlikability and also a tactical one of like, why would I throw my weight around behind this this obvious loser? He's not even going to make it out of the primary. Yeah, I think there's always been a fundamental misunderstanding of why Trump won, and I think the main reason is he's been beloved in culture as, like, the synonym for rich guys. <laughs> like, yeah. all the all the stuff he said about, you know, like, the super reaction stuff, he balanced it out with, oh, we're not going to leave people dying in the street, for instance, or I'm holding up the LGBT flag at the... Like, all that stuff, it, it's, it reminds me of, and I think, like, Sam Adler Bell uh, has made this point, but... He's doing an Elizabeth Warren campaign, which is like, oh, we got all the policy for this. But people wanted, like, that conflict. They just want, like, yeah. somebody mm -hmm. to be, like, a, they don't want to, like, it's not really solutions. It's still time to, like, throw punches, basically. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's a, it's a real thing. You know, the political power, people feel political power because political power does rise out of a base of support that you have. Now, that base of support could be totally astroturfed by wealthy special interests um but you can see like the kind of support bernie sanders had versus the kind of support that elizabeth warren had and it's like okay you could have all the you know i don't like her plans but it's like you could have all the plans in the world all the great plans in the world but if you don't have a swell behind you to push those plans into action like people know it's not going to happen so you just become a dork pointing at charts while everybody mm -hmm. else has fun you know exactly and I knew it was done for DeSantis when, uh, I mean, I knew pretty, we felt, we, we felt pretty early that this wasn't going to work when DeSantis was like sort of mirroring Trump's body movements. Um, <laughs> but, but later is when DeSantis tried to like anglicize his name and he stopped saying, uh, I can't even do it right. I'm, you know, the redneck kid. So like, I can't do a good Italian, um, pronunciation, but like he started saying it like, a, you know, a guy like I would say his name and Trump just jumped on it immediately. And he's just like, you know, how can you trust this guy if he doesn't even know how to say his own name? Right. <laughs> he just knew he was dead in the water at that moment. One, one thing in the beginning about DeSantis is like, 
I think Marco Rubio was behind, got behind Santos. The Bush family got behind mm-hmm. Santos. Like the the Republican establishment got behind DeSantis in the very beginning as an alternative to Trump. Which, yeah, that was like the the serious politically minded individuals alternative to Trump, and that's like a death knell for anybody yep. going up against Trump. And again, I hate to quit har- keep harping on this point, but it's not just because you hate the elites; it's also because you notice how astroturfed that person's campaign is, and mm-hmm. you're like, there is no support here. Why would I entertain it? Um, I saw that clip of. I, uh, from the 2016 debates w- with Trump on stage, did you see that clip going around again? I had forgotten I about it. it. He says, he says, you know, some people in the audience booed him, and he said, "Oh, you know who's booing me? Those are the Republican donors." <laughs> right. And then they booed louder. And then he said, "No, really, we got a notice that said the only people that were mm. able to attend this debate were donors of a certain threshold. So everybody here booing me is part of the establishment. Everybody here booing me is part of the moneyed interests that don't want a popular mm-hmm. candidate to get elected." And they booed and booed and booed, and it was great for him. It was amazing for him. Nobody on the Republican side's ever going to be able to. I mean, no. maybe you know, I never want to say never, but nobody right now is going to be able to match that. You know? Yeah. Also, like I think, one other time when uh, DeSantis really blew it is uh, when he rolled out his merch. His merch is not good, <laughs> um, and unfortunately, that shit's really important. Like we're, when it comes to just the the MAGA hat is going to be talked about in like fashion one day. Yeah, because it, it, it it's one of the it's one of the like most, after like, Andy Warhol. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it it's it's probably one of the it's it, it's more popular than a Yankees hat, right? You know. I, and that's kind of wild to think about. Uh, so I think that's you know he really blew that. He really blew that, and he also didn't do any cameos um, when he was a young young millionaire in movies. So he really blew it there, <laughs> and there, there's just no coming back from that. Yeah, you can't be uh, doing this. Yeah, what is Mug. this? Get shit get... done. Wow, <laughs> it's just boring. It's just not good. Wait, wait he had. A... What's the restore sanity? That's like John Stewart. Is that leftover yeah, John Stewart merch? <laughs> Yeah, that's rough, dude. I mean, you can't be doing that. Proud mama. Yeah, I love the shirt. Yeah, did I, I love the shirt that you can't really read what it says except "kids" in all caps yeah, yeah. <laughs> with an exclamation yeah. point. <laughs> that's the much shirt I want to be wearing. <laughs> yeah, man. Oof. Yeah, there's not a not... single one of these that doesn't look like it's sort of like made by an AI off of previous sort of conservative <laughs> merchandise. Yeah. Um, well, if, if DeSantis guys are rare uh, in the co- in the uh, comment section, how rare are Vivek Ramaswamy guys? Uh, are they coming? Like I don't know, Elon and Tucker Carlson are look the eyes wandering from DeSantis now. They're seeing this young guy. He's you know saying things like God is real, <laughs> and uh, it's very impressive to them. So I'm curious. Yeah, any any Ramaswamy guys? Uh, yeah, he's doing he's doing like the the Eminem Ten Commandments, mm-hmm. the 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 Ten White Rapper <laughs> Commandments, uh, where he talks about marriages between one man and one woman. Um, yeah, no, Vivek is solidly in the intelligent young man yeah. lane. That's that's where he's at. <laughs> Uh, which means he can either uh, sell a bunch of 65 year olds reverse mortgages or uh, maybe he can start like a woke kind of an anti woke kind of M&Ms that, that won't be canceled. <laughs> like those are those are pretty much his two his two. Uh, he's a smart, fine young man, very articulate. You know, uh, people are suggesting he can be uh, Trump's chief, chief of staff or something, <laughs> something I like that. that. Jeez, um, I That's but good in the Republican Party. <laughs> but um, I have yeah, like Veronica twenty three here. This is in the Newsmax comment section. Says I won't vote for a first generation American, especially one that comes from a country where women are gang raped and treated like property. No way. Oh boy. Uh, so it's cool. You see this in comment sections <laughs> where conservatives they can they can be feminist, but that means you have to amp up the racism. Yeah, right. it's like it's yeah, like a balancing it. act. You know what I mean? It's you just have to compensate it with something else. Yeah, like did you see people recently um, praising the Taliban for banning um, OnlyFans? <laughs> they're like, look, the Taliban did it. This is this look. They're, they're even even they're doing it. Why aren't we doing it? And then Gosh, there's also the. A... I mean, sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go. Well, also with Vivek, 
there's the conspiracy theory that he was like a beneficiary of a Soros fellowship. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, damn. I don't know, like his his face is on like a Soros young, intelligent young man uh, profile. <laughs> um, and so like ju jewelry lady here says Vivek Re and forgive me if I'm mispronouncing his last name. I, I haven't heard it much, to be honest. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Vivek Ramaswamy was the beneficiary of the Soros Fellowship, which was used to help cover his costs at Yale. Why hasn't Ramaswamy come clean on that? Ro Royvent Sciences is a biotech firm Ramaswamy started in connection with COVID-19. The Soros Fellowship viewed this as important. Interestingly, Vivek paid Wikipedia editors to erase his Soros Fellowship in COVID work. The Ohio Corona Task Force, which Ramaswamy was a member of, told the governor to shut down which he did um so there's like it's i mean you can point to things that trump did i mean he developed the fucking vaccine he fast-tracked the vaccine but it's it's never gonna stick to trump the way all this standard yeah. like middle yeah. of the road political stuff that all these people have to be involved in to get to the point that they're at it's never gonna wash clean from them the way it does from trump Mm -hmm. Right. And he could yeah, be, be perfect too, but because he could be the absolute perfect candidate, <clears throat> they could even he can say, "I'll do whatever you say." But just because his name is even mentioned close, something like that, he will never be able to get away from that, even if it wasn't mm -hmm. true. Because it's it's been said more than once now, he still can't get away from that. There's just no way. Wow, I, I hadn't heard of that. You know, it's funny. Like, I mean, clearly, it's he was a uh, a, a sort of um, do-gooder, and in these NGO sections, I don't think Soros is is like I don't think Soros controls Vivek Ramaswamy. Just in case there's any conservatives watching, but sure. like he does splash money around a lot on these things, so it's not it's not that big of a surprise. But that's interesting because both him and uh, Doug Burgum, who you guys, I, I guarantee you haven't seen any Doug Burgum guys in the chats. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Doug Burgum is a, a billionaire from North Dakota uh, who sold like a sort of um, business sort of scheduling type slack type of thing it seems like to Bill Gates for a billion dollars and mm -hmm. he wants to be president and I just think like yeah the second that people know that uh, it's, yeah. it's over for you. Yeah, yeah, but he could come out and say, yeah, I got a billion dollars from Bill Gates. That's a billion dollars that can't be used to develop mosquitoes to give to give you a new kind of leukemia or whatever. <laughs> you know, he could he could right. play into that. Yeah, but even yeah. even even if even if it wasn't the actual app Slack, if people just say he's the one who invented Slack, everyone's gonna hate him because if you've used Slack or been in a situation where you have to use Slack <laughs> for your job, you're gonna hate this person. There's, yeah. there's just no way around it. I mean, yeah, well, that's the, what, I'd be a, go ahead, David. No, I'm just saying that's the thing with all of these kind of like, you know, big brain um, Republican strategies, like pe pe people like Peter Thiel um, to kind of like Asho turf these like very nice and smart gentlemen, um, you know, to run for office is that like the conservative base like hates technology, right? Um, or at least like the guys who make it generally. So being able to put any of the, you know, being able to say like, look, I've been innovating a bunch of stuff in California. I've been involved in this. Like you are enemy number one to these people from the get go. Yeah. Yeah. And the only people who this is, is for is for like weird blue check people now on Twitter, super hardcore Elon Musk fans. Um, you know, uh, guys who spend like a shitload of, of time online and like, you know, to, to borrow from Sam Adler Bell, as, as we usually do, like, you know, he said something really smart about the DeSantis campaign in particular, right? Is that like, you know, these are like the way he's running his campaign is like the concerns of like the elites within the Republican Party, right? Like you can get people worked up about, you know, what's going on in schools and, um, you know, with like curriculum and things like that. But at a certain point, like you're talking to like the country club guys who are mad that their kids are finding out that their parents are shitheads. Like what happened here in Texas recently at Texas A&M, uh, they had a they had a um, an expert on like narcotics get into all this hot water um, in, in the medical um, arena uh, because she was giving a lecture and talking about how Texas's um, policies um, are really, really, really bad. Um, and, you know, somebody called up their dad, who is like a major player in the Texas GOP, and they got into hot water, right? So like all this kind of stuff, like the actual like policy side of it is just like, it's the realm of, of the elite and the fucking base of the Republican Party right now hates all those motherfuckers so much mm -hmm. um, that, I don't know, it is, it's a losing strategy. And I hope they keep doing it, frankly, because it's good for, <laughs> for America. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Chris Christie, his most recent like attempt at a clapback 
is to try and say that Republicans are cowards for agreeing with Joe Biden that we can't touch Social Security or Medicare. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's his right. fucking strategy. Who is that gonna resonate with? Exactly the, yeah. the donors, the the mm -hmm. donor class mm -hmm. of the Republican Party who wants to eliminate Social Security and Medicare. Like that's not gonna that's not gonna resonate because like you go into these comment sections and you see people they're like, why would we eliminate? You know, these are Newsmax comment sections where you know right wing viewership, right wing readership. Who are like, why would we get rid of Social Security and Medicare? We can raise the cap. We can make mm -hmm. millionaires pay more, pay more into it. You know, they're they're actually pushing back with the progressive, you know, social democrat style policies, uh, in the in the face of, yeah, the astroturfed Republicans, which is really funny to see. And it's not like the days of old where you can say, Oh, the reason why why you know we're disagreeing with him and pushing back on him is because he's black. You can't do that anymore. You can't just say what well, we disagree with him because we all agreed we we're going to disagree with everything he was going to say no matter what. Um, now they have to be like, oh no, there's a reason why we want to get rid of Social Security. You can't just lean on that anymore, <laughs> like the good old days. Um, Man, well, speaking of technology, yeah. real quick, when I. I, I posted it. I got an email from I think it was it was still Newsmax and it was like Vivek Ramaswamy says he wants to run the government like Musk runs Twitter. Oof. Oh, Oof. And I mean like what a wow. I mean maybe you could get some conservatives who are still like uh in the honeymoon phase with their relationship with Elon Musk on Twitter, but most conservatives on Twitter are miserable. They're miserable he at Twitter. Yeah. He blocked cat turd. He blocked cat turd, uh, the, like amazing. Just in the past twenty four hours, so, yeah, it's the honeymoon is over. And he makes electric cars too. Like, I like it's yeah. so funny when these guys, like you know, like Jordan Peterson, will put out these videos like praising Elon Musk, and he has to sort of caveat. He's like, and he's doing really good things with cars. You don't have to agree with what he's doing with cars, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, see, here's what happens is with that phenomenon, and it's some. Thank you for bringing that up because it's something I just kind of realized. You as a conservative, you get to be. Be the bigger person you get to be the bigger person mm -hmm. and be like now i don't agree with his electric car policy but i agree with all of his other uh whatever all of his other policies <laughs> about how much he hates trans his own trans kid or whatever um but then you also get to own the libs with something like well you're a liberal you voted for a democrat ergo you have a tesla <laughs> and now you have to look at elon musk who's owning you every day so that's like it's cool because you get to be the bigger person and also the pettier person at the same time oh yeah I'm that drives me crazy go ahead tony i'm waiting to see someone use like as a death blow against their opponent you know no matter if it's you know the, a republican taking down democrat or republican taking down republican where they just they just bring out the new Dodge Charger that's electric and they say this is his fault <laughs> this and even even though even though it goes like a thousand miles an hour and, and like they're gonna like start their old Dodge Charger next to the new Dodge Charger and be like you, you you don't hear his and that's his fault yeah, so you, all, yeah this is what happens when you make the military gay yeah <laughs> obviously the Chargers become gay <laughs> yeah, and like they didn't think about the repercussions because once the chargers go electric, then recruitment's going to go down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Military recruitment's going to just go, it's just going to fall to the floor. I love this I've response had... to the, to, sorry. Yeah, yeah. no, no I'm, I'm listening. Uh, the response to Vivek running the, <laughs> the country like Musk runs Twitter, which is just, yeah, announce a new policy that everybody hates and then quietly <laughs> delete later or yep, something like yep. that, I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, know it all says Twitter is bleeding money and Vivek wants to run the country like that. Yeah, very good question. Uh, Bobo, <laughs> Le Bobo Le Pew. So he's just, he's, <laughs> he's a fan of, Pe he's a, a, a fan of Pepe Le Pew. He's taken the surname of, of Le Pew. Uh, <laughs> It is very common for publicly held companies to decide to take a hit and remove the crap from their operation and run leaner and more profitably going forward. As long as the analysts know the reasons, you'll be fine. Ooh. So I love, I, love, I love telling people, no, we're going to run the country like Twitter, and you might be upset and not understand, but uh, investment analysts, the, the uh, <laughs> investors and, and the 1%, as long as they're taken care of, everything will be fine. See, you're talking Man. shit, but the thing is, like, yeah, he can't, Musk can't remove the block function from Twitter because it's, 
in, in order to have a social media platform, you have to legally do that. But if you're if you're running the country that way, you're running the country, so you just change the law that stops mm-hmm. you from moving the block. And that's the way they're thinking about it. Like imagine if we, imagine if Elon really had free reign. Imagine how good X would be then. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I mean. First of all, this, the Reddit guy, the CEO who is trying to IPO Reddit and doing so by cutting costs about like moderation stuff that had the uh, Reddit moderators on strike, he also said the exact same thing. Is I look at what Elon Musk did at Twitter as inspiration for this, and it's like you got none of you have any original thoughts. It's you're just automatons at like the height of you know economic decision making in this country. Like, yeah, are, so are they, are they, are they the even on tech- Twitter? Because, like, if you're on Twitter, you're seeing people just be nothing but mad about Twitter. Right. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. The one tech guy that they could get behind is also, like, because of his culture war bullshit that he constantly does, his flirting with anti-Semitism and, like, r- r- uh, race science and shit like that, all this, like, they could get behind him, except he's doing such a demonstrably bad job of the actual job of running it. So you can't even, you can't even use him as a positive example. It's very funny. Yeah. Um, in the final uh, uh, section of this interview, uh, Alex, you are also, in addition to a podcast host, a teamster for UPS. And you guys mm-hmm. have been doing great work um, discussing both uh, the part time, uh, full time dynamics here, but also uh, related to the mission of your show, uh, the way sort of this, these union politics uh, intersects with our culture, uh, uh, sort of. Um, partisan politics uh, between GOP and Democrat, for instance. Um, I'm just curious. So before we get into that, though, um, tell people about how you're voting. I believe the final day of voting is Tuesday, uh, the 22nd. Uh, is that correct? Um, yeah. T- to walk people through your vote, uh, no vote before we get into some of the more um, uh, other ways people are voting no. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a really complicated. I have really complicated emotions about this contract. Um, this for people who aren't as following as closely. Our our current president is a reform president of the Teamsters. He's sort of like the protest candidate who ran against J- uh, Jimmy Hoffa Jr.'s selected uh, candidate. Jimmy Hoffa Jr. was our previous president who forced through uh, bad contract after bad contract that membership opposed, but we, due to uh, bylaws in our constitution, they were able to override our our votes. Uh, we got that part of the constitution amended last uh, two years ago. And so we, uh, yeah, our, our, there's, there's a current strong wave of like militancy within the union that pushed us to this leadership team and also did get us i mean uh, the best contract we you know i've been a ups teamster for 17 years and this is by far the best contract i've seen um it's also really uh it, extremely the best contract i've seen for part timers who are who make up 60% of ups's labor force people don't realize that they see the memes about the well paid drivers or whatever 60% of of ups employees are like are making around like 15 bucks an hour and they're loading all the trucks they're unloading the trucks they're sorting the packages like every ups package you get is touched by you know probably 5 to 10 part time employees whereas the one full time driver brings it to you so um this contract gives a big bump to those part-time employees um it's not quite what we were fighting for which was we wanted 25 dollars an hour for part-time employees and this contract gets them up to 21 in the first year and then to about 25 at the end of this five-year contract which is which is good but it's you know with inflation and all that really not enough um so I I am going you know there's there's other things as well but um there's a lot of really good stuff in this contract we got rid of our two tier driving system uh which if people aren't familiar with that phrase it's a way of creating a second category of a very similar job operation that makes less wages and of course it's an incentive for the company to hire more of those you know lower paid uh, employees as opposed to like, you know, a good career, which I have because I'm, because I've been full time at UPS, you know, it took me a while to get here, but once, once you get to full time, uh, it, it is a really good career. I have a pension, I have benefits. I, you know, I was able to buy a house a couple years ago. 
Um, and we want to we want to secure that for future employees, and so we were able to get rid of that lower paid tier driving job. Uh, but I, I still think we need to get part time pay up just to retain employees. Um, UPS was voluntarily raising wages for part timers just to keep them, like paying them more than what the contract said, just so we could have people to load our trucks in the morning. And um, I'm not sure that 21 an hour solves that. But I'm also not sure if there's the fight within the union to push farther than this really good contract. Um, so you, you see some, you know, vote no campaigns being organized, especially by part timers. And I really respect that. That's the only way to go forward is for uh, part time Teamsters to organize themselves and, and to be able to form like a block that can successfully influence leadership and give them direction. Uh, because a no vote, you vote down a contract. Well, that doesn't mean that the next contract is going to have what you want in it. You still have to be able to uh, communicate and influence those wishes of the broader uh, rank and file membership. Uh, so it's very curious. It's, it'll be very interesting to see what happens. I'll be voting no to see if that energy is there to push farther. Um, and yeah, I'm eager to see how it turns out. Yeah, and I'd just recommend uh, your guys' episode um, on July 21st uh, with Alex interviewing uh, US, UPS part timers. Um, and uh, also, you know, we don't, I don't want to, I want people to uh, become patrons and, uh, and listen to your most recent uh, episode. I voted no today because I am a man, but just broadly speaking, <laughs> um, I'm fascinated by this sort of like, because we talk theoretically on this show about, you know, what the union movement, a uh, revitalized union movement could do for our um, cursed politics uh, in this country. And, mm -hmm. but you actually are witnessing it sort of actually happening in front of your eyes. I'm just curious what observations you have about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's spectacular because, you know, like we said on that episode, um, the election derangement is so intense that you just, if, if, if a vote is happening anywhere for whatever reason, like <laughs> there are people going to be calling it fake or rigged or whatever, you know what I mean? Because, because of that. And it's like, it's so funny that in what is the most democratic process, like almost anyone sees in America. And it's still a small percentage of people who are in unions to see this democratic process. But we have like a direct, a borderline direct democracy within the union. And to see people still freak out about rigged elections or about, you know, the, the elites uh, turning, you know, turning levers and, and things like that is very funny. Um, but it's also funny to see people who do have this desire for a showdown with the company for a confrontation with capital they wouldn't call it capital they would call it the boss or the ceo or whatever they they want this fight and they feel this fight is like the morally righteous and logically correct thing to do but the only language they have to describe that is a meme of dylan mulvaney saying i'm voting yes on the contract <laughs> because because I love the CEO Carol Tomei or whatever, so it's it's fascinating because it's like you're doing the right thing in a in the most bizarre way I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, go ahead, Tony. Well, yeah, it's that's that whole thing where it's like I, I'm I'm happy that they're 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 making the decision. It's just unfortunate what got them there. You know, it's yeah. just unfortunate what got them there. And yeah, that that whole brain poisoning of just the distrust of. Um, electoral politics has just bled its way over into everything else to where uh, it's almost like they need to find a new term that's not vote. You know, it's almost <laughs> like, you know, uh, maybe just take a poll or just anything else, you know, because like they're, they're going to, they're convinced that right now, like Ale Alexander is going to uh, show everybody um, the QR code and we're all going to vote um to corrupt it you know like that that's right. what i think is going to happen it's like it's not but that they're just so scared of it it's so it's so funny to watch because it it is this is the one time where they do have the vote that will directly affect right. their life right mm -hmm. it's like an actual important vote and it's so yeah. and to be like so deranged and like stirring yourself up into a fervor you're like undermining an actual democratic power you have yeah 
Yeah. Like if you, you voting, you have to be really rich if you think that whoever you're going to vote for for president is going to make you more money. But mm-hmm. this is the one time where your vote will make you more money if that's the only way you want to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I, I mean, I can't recommend the episode enough. Um, you guys get into the uh, the ways that certain guys are trying to voter fraud this thing to prove a point in a way that's not exactly productive. But again, like I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, you know, reveal too much of it. Um, Tony and Alexander, thank you guys so much. Uh, Minion Death Cult, Patreon dot com slash Minion Death Cult. Um, oh, give your Twitter ads or uh, you know Blue Sky ads if you want to uh, get off Twitter. But uh, yeah, where should people follow you guys? Uh, at Minion Death Cult and at Flaildy, F L I E L D Y. It's a portmanteau of the two coolest bass players in the world. Yeah. yeah. And I'm uh, at Word is Bond or Word is Bond TV everywhere. Uh, easy to find on like Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Come hang out. Yeah. Thanks so thanks much so for much having us on. Yeah, of course. Thank you guys. Happy, Appreciate it. <laughs>